to what we would call worship. And there are lots of expectations that are put on gatherings like this, whether they're said or they're unsaid. If I would ask you, why are we here? You probably would say, well, to worship God. And then I might ask, what is worship? And so I'd say, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about worship. When we talk about worship, and I'm talking, generally speaking, just the word itself, worship. You could worship anything. Worship itself is an expression of what or who you love. That's what worship is. And you can worship anything. And we do worship lots of things. Let's just simply be honest. When you worship something, you are ascribing value and, and, and worth and honor. You're saying this thing is worthy of my devotion. Right? And so when we gather in places like this, it really what it is is an expression of our love for God and for one another. For you can't have one without the other. John makes that very clear. You cannot love God and not love people. And in fact, I would go a step further and tell you, based on what John says, is the way that you love God is how you love people. And so when we come together in places like this, it really is an expression of our love for God and our love for one another. Now, there's different images in our minds that come with that, right, that are associated with that. Uh, when, when I say that, you might think, yes, I love God and one another. And so in your mind, you might have like a cross, right? I, I would like to challenge that. And if you're willing to indulge me here, maybe the better image in your mind would be of the Trinity, something similar to the Trinity. For it is you and God, and you might say God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but this God and others. And so there is like this Trinitarian dance that's happening here. And, and dancing is okay, by the way. And for more abstract thinkers, I would challenge you maybe to see this type of gathering like this. We're all in this together in God. So we're just enveloped and surrounded and baptized, if you will, into his presence together. For we are together as one. And scripture uses lots of different ways to explain this, to show this demonstration of how when we come together, it's about an expression of our love for God and our love for one another. And so I would hope that as you would leave a gathering like this, that you would leave with a sense of that taste in your mouth. Just with a sense of that love. Either it's because you have poured it out or you have been filled with it. That love for God and for one another. I would hope that you would leave here with feeling like you are connected and engaged with that concept, with that idea, with one another and with God. I, I would hope that you would, you would leave with a sense of empowerment to go out and continue <laughs> in that love and to love others as an expression of your love for God. That's what I would hope would happen in a gathering like this. And again, you may have lots of expectations of what this is, either said or unsaid. But we need to have a conversation about our gathering time. And so this morning, we're going to have a conversation with our shepherds. And so if you will, join me in welcoming our shepherds to the stage. Uh, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is start with each one of you introducing yourselves and telling people how long you've been here at North Point. You don't have to tell your age, just how long you've been here at North Point. Go ahead, Tom. Tom. My name is Tom Withrow. Uh, Sherry and I have been at North Point since August of 2011. Uh, we have two grown children, both of whom are married, a boy and a girl, and both of them live in the Dallas area. I'm Doug Preby. Uh, Deanna and I have been here since the first service, which was July 4th weekend, 15 years ago. I'm Mark Smith. Um, Amy and I have been here uh, with North Point since May of 2010. And, uh... Uh, Mike Campbell, uh, Francis and I uh, started uh, with the church here in, in, in 2004, and we were excited to, uh, to be part of uh, the, the church uh, plant. Um, Doug and uh, Dro and I were uh, three original, uh, the first elders uh, here in, I believe, 2008. Uh, Dro passed away about, about two years ago or so, and I, I miss him up, up, to, uh, up to this time. He was a wise man and had a lot of insight into uh, what it means to be a, a Christian uh, a servant. And so we, we have... Uh, Three kids, uh, seven grandkids, and one uh, great-granddaughter. All right, so we have, in other words, a lot of ancient wisdom up here, right? A lot of, a lot of. Okay, so we want to start, we start with Mike, um, and then we'll work with the rest of you guys. Uh, help us understand uh, how each of you see worship, what are your desires, what are your likes, what are your expectations, and Mike, if you'll start us off with that. Well... For me, the, the key uh, in worship is, uh, is thankfulness. Uh, so it's uh, realizing what, uh, what God has done uh, for us, uh, for me, uh, for his people, uh, really throughout time. We read about that in, in the Old Testament, God has taken care of his people. We read about it in, in the New Testament with uh, first the disciples uh, teaching people about uh, salvation and the kingdom and then sending um, uh, Christ as our Savior uh, giving us the Holy Spirit uh, to guide us and giving us the, the church to, uh, to keep us together so there's a lot to, uh, to be thankful for and, and so how, how do we do that well in worship we can we can do that we sing uh, praises uh, to God with, with one another and also encouragement so um, you know some might say it's all, it's all about God and, and us speaking uh, to God and, but uh, there's also an encouragement uh, one another, among one another in, in uh, Hebrews 10 it says when um, when uh, the people assemble we're to encourage one another and so um we, we do that when we when we sing songs uh, together uh, to each other, and we see others uh, singing. Uh, we're encouraging each other, and we, we encourage each other when we when we meet, uh, you know, first out in, in the foyer, and and uh, and then also it, for me, um, worship includes kind of a, a, a cleansing. There's probably a better word for that, but so d during the week. I hear uh, you know th things on the news and, and and things said that doesn't doesn't sound very good uh, uh, you know for me or for the, for the world but uh, in in worship I can uh, think that uh, God is still in control and and I hear Him saying it's it's going to be okay and and we can uh, we we do that together and um, that's. Um, that's an important, important aspect of, uh, of worship uh, to me. And so, what do I like uh, in worship? Um, well, I like I like the you know praise songs that we sing, um, but I also like uh, some um, kind of some one another songs. So some of the older hymns, if 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 you, if you think back on those songs, a lot of those we're, we're singing about each other. And, and about other uh, 
Christians and how we um, grow together. And uh, so, um, so, so, you know, some of the uh, some of the older hymns, and we we mix in those at times, and, and I like that. I like uh, several men being involved up here and in, in during the worship. Um, I think that kind of kind of connects us uh, well. And um, and I like to hear the gospel uh, during during worship. So uh, we do that uh, indirectly, sometimes directly. So the good news, e- either in our, our um, uh, a prayer uh, during the sermon, uh, the communion talk, uh, we we need to hear that. Be reminded that uh, the importance of the um, the good news. We'll try. Um, in my office at work, I have two pieces of art on my wall, um, created by my uh, four-year-old granddaughter, and um, one of them, yeah, exactly, and one of them is is a freehand drawing of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, earlier this summer, we were visiting uh, around my birthday, and and, uh, and and Amy and Claire were. We're looking on on uh, YouTube for uh, things about the Statue of Liberty because a year ago she got infatuated with it, and is and is still um, uh, very much infatuated with the Statue of Liberty. So they found this how to draw Statue of Liberty. So they they drew it and, and they and, and Claire gave it to me for my birthday. So I put it on my wall. Well, if it's been there since uh, June, so people would come in and they go. oh, where did that come from? I tell the story, and I always ask, you know what that is? Nobody's guessed yet that it's a Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's basically, you know, you can imagine, it's, it's, a, it's kind of an ink drawing, and there's a kind of a coloring of green on it, like this. And, and I, can, I can see, then what I do is, when the people say they don't know, I say, well, can't you see it's the Statue of Liberty? It's like, there's the torch, and there's there's our eyes, and because I can see it, I can see it. Oh, by the way, uh, since then, she only colors it being pink because green's a boy color and pink is a girl color. Girl color. My point in telling that story is, and maybe you've experienced this, is I can see it because she drew it. <laughs> and worship, it's kind of like that. I mean. We, very often we talk about the things we do in wor- worship and the idea that we can make it perfect. We can make it great. Well, at the end of the day, it's, it's a kid's drawing that God puts on his refrigerator or, or on his wall. And he knows what it is. He can t- say, yeah, that was, that was worship. So for me, when I think about worship, I don't think I don't think about it in terms of what I like and don't like, and, and that sounds very um, I don't know. Part of this is these guys can tell you I live in the thirty thousand foot level of that things. Um, see, and uh, <laughs> but my point of that is is when we get stuck on, on the on a on a, on a the thing that we actually the thing that we do. It's easy then to be. It's only as good as we can. It's only about as good as we can make it be. And at the end of the day, we're not the ones adding the value to it. It's God. So, and, and and one of the challenges in looking in Scripture about all this is that there's very little that's specifically, especially in the New Testament, about how we do worship. So there's one chapter, First Corinthians 14, which is kind of about it's about that. And it's interesting that it follows First Corinthians 13 about love because we need it in talking about 1 Corinthians 14. Because there, all throughout there are the things that were happening in their worship, and Paul is talking about how to deal with that. But there's a, uh, it all comes back to, and I will read this, um, starting in 
it's in the middle of verse 25. This is about um, uh, people that are prophesying and the impact on people hearing them. I'll start from the beginning. As the secrets of their hearts are laid bare, so they will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. To me, that's kind of what we, we're talking about today. The things we do, are we building each other up? Are we, are we declaring to the people outside this, these walls who God is and that he sent his son and that his spirit is living among us? So to me, okay, again, I'm up here. I'm sorry. I apologize if it's too high up there the nosebleed section. Um, but I think there's, there's great value in going back and thinking about what we do, right? Because we're kind of in a, in a transitional moment with, with uh, worship, and it's a good point in time for us to do this. Because I can feel it sitting right here. That this is something that is so important to each one of you, period. It's so important to you, and it's important to us. And, and when we were talking about this, and it came to this, to deciding we'll be here today, um, that's really what came out of our conversation: is that that you know we we feel that, and and. It's so important for a church family, and we, we just wanted to lay, lay it out there where we are, and and because uh, we're about this together. That, and I'll say one more thing, and this is going to take a, you know, <laughs> got a lot to say. Um, one of the things that was, quite frankly, one of the things I mean I noticed first about North Point when we came that first Sunday in May of 2010. That the worship time together was important to this family, and that and they wanted it to be glorifying God, and they wanted it to be touching the community. Not really sure that type of thing about what North Point's about, and and that's what this this our time together does. It talks about who we are and who we want to be, and and why we do what we do, and who we love, and all that. So, anyway, so that's. A lot about worship for me, um, and I appreciate your, your hearts and, and listening. How would you like to have conversations with him? <laughs> exactly. I think Adam hit on the key. key you know, the worship is when we love. We have to need to love one another, and then together we love and worship God. And that key of loving one another is just absolutely important. Um, we have a vast varied viewpoint of what we like and what we don't like. For instance, I grew up in the 60s, I went to college in the early 70s, my viewpoint of what I like best in worship has to do with the devotionals during that, has to do with when we went on wilderness track, we had the devotionals, the types of songs we sang back there. I remember coming back to the church building afterwards, and people saying, well, those are just campfire songs. And I'm like, that's not worthy of worship. And that really bothered me back then. Well, we're in a different situation now. You know, the teens that tend to be over here, we've got older people that tend to be over here, we've got young families over there. Each group, plus a lot of others, have vastly different things that they prefer. So, <laughs> uh, now I lost my train of thought, Tom. <laughs> so there is no way that we're going to have a single style that will even be what any majority of us want. We will never have my preferred style, nor should we ever have my preferred style. But as loving one another, we're not to look out for our own, we're to look out for one another. What helps us as a family worship most effectively? I think one really good example of that was last week uh, when Tim brought up the young kids 
and uh, sang the kids' song there. Well, think about that just a minute. If he had done that with no kids in there, we'd be going, oh, what is that? That would not have been an appropriate song at all, but I think I heard terms like, this is good, this is great, this is fantastic. Why was it fantastic? Because the kids worship differently. We know that. We understand it intuitively. And uh, we get a gratification out of watching them singing their hearts out to God. We can have the same thing with one another. If someone loves rap, which I would hate, I can get gratification out of watching them love God and singing their hearts out to God that way. Worship's always been the high point of the week. I talk about corporate worship together. Um, I like to sing, and I'd like to have 12 or 15 songs every week. Sorry. <laughs> but I know there are people that would prefer to just sing one or two, and do we have to do this part? Well, okay, yeah, I get it. So I find other ways to, to get my daily fix of, of worship songs. But I do want and do hope that our worship together is a time that's invigorating that we can build each other up. And I think each of, our, of us has hit on this. We want to build one another up. This is our time that we are together and we stir ourselves up so that we are ready to continue worship each day during the week. All right, so the next question, and what Tom's gonna lead on this and then the rest of the guys are gonna have opportunity to just add any additional uh, things, but let's talk a little bit about what's going on at North Point. Um, Tom, how would you describe what you've seen in the past with North Point Worship, and then let's talk about where we are now. Okay, when I first came to North Point, one of the things that very much drew me to uh, what we wanted to, what was going on, was that every week was different. When I say that, it was not every not everything was different because there's a whole bunch of people helping unload a trailer, get everything set up, move everything around, get the chairs set up, uh, make sure that we're ready to go, get places for the kids. There was total involvement in the preparation for worship. And when we prepare for worship, we can worship better because we're ready to talk to God. But more than that, we're ready to listen. And this morning, very aptly, devotional thought that came across my feed says, uh, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me, and I'll show you how. That's from Luke chapter 9. We have to be willing to embrace change and things that are different. That was one thing that was very exciting for me when we first came to North Point, that there was change. I remember Scott and Michelle doing lots of dramas and presentations, and that, that meant a lot to me and people that were preparing and being ready. Uh, as we've matured as a congregation, sometimes it's become okay, let's do this just so that we can get on and listen to Adam and then we can get on and the Cowboys play at noon, so are you going to be done in time for us to be? And, and worship does not become that challenge or that invigorating thing, but rather something to be born with and, and suffered through. And I hope that, okay, I'm not going to shout, but I could, but that worship means something in your heart language that you're free to let worship in your heart language but allow someone else to worship a little bit differently in their heart language I, uh, I uh, was thinking about when we, we started uh, North Point uh, a couple things we, uh, we, we had written down one was that we wanted people to feel free to Express themselves in worship, so if that was uh, clapping, uh, we, we wanted them to do that. We didn't want everybody to feel like they had to clap. If, if some wanted to uh, raise their hands uh, uh, during a song or prayer, uh, we, we encourage.
encouraged that because he didn't he didn't want people to feel like everybody needed to needed to do that. Um, something else we did that uh, those of you who were here in the beginning may not remember, but we we had uh, written down that the uh, sermon would be broken up into, into shorter sermons, so they were two or three, ten or fifteen minute sermons instead of one uh, thirty minute sermon. And we did that that way for uh, you know, at least a couple of years. We just you know, we, we, then we decided we didn't need to do it that way, and we and we, uh, we changed. Uh, I, I asked someone this morning uh, what they felt about our worship, and they said, uh, "Well, it, it's okay," and I, I think it is okay. Uh, but uh, our thinking when we got together and we discussed this a couple weeks ago is we think we can, we can do better. And we, we think that God uh, deserves that. You know, when we come here, um, we, uh, we want to give our best. And, it, you know, that used to be, you know, you wore a, a suit and a tie and, and women uh, dressed up. Uh, and, and now it's, it's, it's a little different, but we still dress up our, our best. We want to look good, uh, and, uh, and that's the way we want our worship. I guess when I think about, um, in, that, in the vein of what's different, well, I'll state the obvious, the faces in the room. The folks that were around the, that first Sunday when North Point came together, and now, is different. Um, several of you were there. Several of you were there at first, but many of us were not. So, so th th that alone is a change. Um, I'd say one thing that I know I feel like I've been challenged by and that many shepherds have is dealing with that. Um, uh, you know, from the beginning, and it required a, a lot of, uh, I'd say, manual effort just to make things happen, just because the, the, the nature of meeting in a school versus in a, a building like this. So, so that's different. Um, so, but, but incorporating new people and and uh, finding places and and, and uh, allowing new new folks to join and and because it's a family then it's a family now. Um, so, I think we'll always be challenged with that, and that's true for any any church. I think. Um, so, this is where we are today, right? So. So, so, so what? So we're, here we are, you know. Here we are, and uh, and uh, so we're talking about worship with this church family, and and the and is who's gonna, who's going to show up next. So and and, uh, and all along we want to keep that focus on glorifying God and building each other up. When we started North Point, I think most of us that helped start it knew each other pretty well. And we kind of knew our likes and dislikes, and we oriented service and worship around that. Well, things have changed a lot, like, like I said, and especially when we moved in the building, things have changed a lot. And I don't think we've really rethought what's best for us as a family here at North Point today. And I think that's, that's what, what's important. We, we also have some issues where we could get better at execution and I think that, you know, if we ask anyone what could we do better, I'm sure we'll get all sorts of ideas. But the general thing is let, let's, let's find out with who we are today, what, what way can we best love one another? What way can we best worship God together? So the next question is for Mark. And, again, you guys have an opportunity to chime in. Um, you know, Mark, sometimes there is just a simple need to try something different. Uh, ask my wife and my kids, I like to move furniture. I know people are like, well, that's a like woman's job, right? Really? Who, who said that? <laughs> who made that decision? I like to move furniture. Sometimes I just need something different. And so I move the furniture, eventually move it right back to where it was before. <laughs> but I just need something different. Um, and so sometimes there's just simply a need to try something different, right? 
What are you guys proposing that uh, we do and why? Okay. Everybody exhale. Okay. It, Tom already, already mentioned that, that I think we've seen over the years, we've, we've tried different things in worship and done different things and involved more broadly, you know, people in the seats, if you will, then all directed from the front. So, so, and all those were done intentionally as a way to involve everyone, that one another thing um, in worship. Um, we've talked about kind of where we are today, what we've been doing, and, and what aspect of worship do we think we need to kind of focus on? Well, the thing that kind of came up, and it does, quite frankly, in a lot of discussions about North Point, community all right so it's that one another thing um, and I would say that that's more broadly thought of than just the, the members here but it's also the community at large uh, outside the building you know so what is that so <clears throat> so what, what we're challenging our uh, worship planning team and our praise team those those that are involved with worship think more broadly about how to think about the other person whether they're here or they're not here now it might be later but how to think about that so there's one one st one thing we want to try it's a little different I think we may have done it once before is to use the praise team is to try try it with them being on stage for a few songs. See what that would look like. And the thought behind that is, just like last week seeing the kids on stage, which probably that was impromptu, that was a last minute thing, um, it's seeing the faces of people. And that's one of the things I've, uh, that we always harken back to at the, at the school was having kind of that U shape and you see people, right? Doug talked about that, about seeing other people sing in worship. So, so there's a visual, uh, an intended visual impact of kind of completing the circle. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's all of us together. There's, there's, there's just not just one person, but, but it's a continuation of all of us. Um, it, it's worked effectively other places, maybe it hasn't in others. We just want to try and see what it, what it looks, what what, if any impact it would have. So we're we're proposing that for at least one or two Sundays in December, and then we'll look and go. Well, did that make sense? Did that accomplish anything? Did it did it did it uh, uh, touching by his heart? Um, what was it overly distracting? Um, all those kind of things. But that's just trying something, right? And um, um, got the, again, going back to the heart of who we are here, because we do live with our, I think we lead with our heart at North Point, which is, I think is a strength, um, is, is how, we, how we feel. And feelings are tough for us. I know for me personally growing up, Feelings were not encouraged in worship. Um, and that's not to say that they weren't there, because they were. So, so having, it's just, how do we connect with one another better? How do we uh, uh, praise God with one another better? Um, and again, that's one aspect, just of singing. That's only one part of what we do on Sunday morning. But it's obviously the, the part that we kind of all do together. So we're also going to ask, we're asking Steve Newcomb to help us because he has experience with this at other places with um, uh, developing and using the praise team on stage, encouraging, singing, helping people learn new songs, um, all kinds of various aspects we hadn't thought about. In worship planning, for example, the way we're structured right now, we, we have teams that do we, a specific Sunday. They're not connected to the prior Sunday or the next Sunday, they're for that Sunday. 
The other thing we want to think about, how do we do better long-term planning with, 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 with our worship? So that maybe we, we carry a theme throughout a month and we, we intentionally learn a new song that we repeat and we, and we don't just sing it once and then it goes off to Never Never Land. Um, so that's another, there's, there's so many aspects of things that we, that we just want to take this moment, this, this point in time, to step back and go, okay, what if we thought about this a little different and be sure that our motives are, 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 are pure and good and, we're, and the things we're do, that we do each Sunday really do praise and glorify God and encourage one another when we're together. So that's what, that's what we're asking those teams to do. We're asking for constructive input from all of you as well as, as we go through this process. Um, because I'll add one more thing in our conversations, and I want you to know this is <laughs> this is not just this topic; it's others. The four of us, we are painfully aware that we don't know everything about everything. I don't know if you know that or not, but we really don't know everything about everything. So, <laughs> but at the same time. I think our role is to kind of work everybody together and listen because this is important. This is important. And, uh, and you're important and your voice is important. And um, so, so, I don't know, that's all I have to say. Anybody else want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I mentioned a little earlier that North Point will not be and should never be the style that I prefer. So I'll just, this is a perfect example here. I don't really prefer having a priest team up front. In fact, I'd say I almost don't like it. Now, why do I support it? Because I think most likely that's the right thing for North Point and for us as a body to worship together and love one another. And, I, and one other thing I want to really emphasize on this, the, that's on one thing, we make a lot of mistakes as shepherds. One thing we do real hard, we really try to stand back and say, what's the right thing for North Point? Not what is it that I want, what is it that I prefer? And I'll challenge each of you to make that several times. The same type of, have that same type of attitude toward North Point. Now, one other thing I think that bears mentioning right now is there is absolutely no agenda to try to be conservative or go more traditional. There's also absolutely no agenda try to go more progressive or contemporary. Both of those, as far as I'm concerned, are irrelevant. What's important is to match what best helps us as a family at North Point to worship God. Being a math major, I like numbers. And uh, growing up, we probably used 60 or 70 songs ever. We had the blue book great songs of the off church and uh, we probably use 60 or 70 of those songs since September 1st we've used 85 different songs in our worship here just in the past two and a half months we've used 85 different songs so one of the things that we want to talk about is is focusing on more continuity I like singing a whole lot of different new songs because it, it hits me to see different people's way of working. But maybe we need to focus and pull down for a while and focus on a group of songs and then shift to a different group of songs or be willing to change. Because uh, in, in the rest of that devotional thought that came, why is God always putting these troubles in front of us? because he's still growing us up. Uh, Dallas Willard uh, said something that I've, I've repeated several times, and, and uh, I'll, I'll repeat it here. He said, uh, we all want to be transformed, but none of us want to change. So, you know, change, uh, it, it's a part of life. We change schools, we change jobs, uh, we change houses. 
and uh, so uh, it's uh, it's just a, a kind of a, a natural uh, thing. Um, so it was interesting. I follow a um, a Christian leader's uh, blog, and this morning I happened to to open up the email, and, and this was. Uh, was on his side. It says, if the church is going to reach its potential, change isn't optional, it's inevitable. So, uh, you know, we're obviously not talking about a, a, a big change here, uh, but uh, it's something that I, that I, I kind of like. I go to ACU for their lectureship uh, every year, and, and um, we attend the, the chapel you know, where the kids uh, attend at, at noon, and they have praise team on, on stage and attended their church service uh, there at the university church and, and they do the same thing um, and then one other, one other thing um, anytime we uh, think about a change um, and, and I've thought about this a lot because I, I think we think that if we're changing we're saying you know we, we were doing things wrong before you know, and so why, why are we changing? Um, but there's, there's more than one right way to do things. And uh, so we're not talking about, you know, doing things uh, uh, different because it's, it's not right. It's just a different way of, of doing things, and, and it could uh, uh, improve uh, how, how we do things. And one other thing I'll mention um, is, is the word entertainment. So I, I, I hear this uh, when we talk about worship. We're not here to be entertained, and, that, and that's right. We're not here to be entertained like a, um, you know, like a concert or a variety show. But I, but if you look up the word entertainment, it's being provided with enjoyment. Being provided with enjoyment. So uh, one of our purposes for uh, for being here is to enjoy uh, our relationship with God and to enjoy our relationship with one another. So uh, sometimes when you lead the service and, and, and you, you mention to, the, to Adam uh, about the worship or about the uh, sermon, you probably don't say, I was transformed today or I was changed today. You, you likely say, I enjoyed it today. And uh, so does that mean you're entertained? Well, kind of in a way, that's, that's the definition. We enjoy uh, our relationship with God and we enjoy our relationship with our brothers and sisters. If we didn't, we don't need to be here Sunday morning. We can, we can do that at home. Uh, yeah. Yeah, lots of good things are said here. And I think it's important to remember that this isn't about becoming more progressive or more conservative. Uh, I hate those words. I hate the concepts. I don't, I don't live as high in the clouds as Mark does, uh, but there are these ideas that we have and we, we when we talk about being progressive or conservative, we're limiting ourselves into these containers. And so we say that we can only do those things that will label us one way or the other. And it keeps us from really seeing the opportunities, the possibilities, and really even seeing our own faults, okay? So this is not about either one of those. It's about what's doing best, what's best for the church. Now, here's the thing. There's a plethora of different viewpoints here. And, man, that is tough to work in this environment when you have so many people who think so differently about things and typically church is branded and you're part of the brand okay that's typically how it goes and you all look alike you'll think alike you'll have the same viewpoints for the most part or at least viewpoints that are tolerable for other people okay uh, that's not what this is we didn't just throw a brand out there and say if you like it come if you don't go down the street uh, that's not how we see this working and so this is about now beginning to listen to other viewpoints as well and taking that into consideration. Another thing I might add with all of this is that, this, and this is something that I've wanted for a long time, uh, this is about also getting our teens more involved, our children more involved in our worship, in the planning and, and in being engaged and participating in that. And I dare say that there's a lot of things that you can learn from children and specifically from our teens, things that you will not know otherwise because, simply put, you are a different generation. I am as well. Like I said before, my daughters be using words and I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what is, what are you, I don't know what you're saying. I don't get it, right? And I have to start Googling stuff. So 
they can teach us lots of things that we would not know. Yeah, sure, there's guidance and there's, there, there's things that we provide as far as equipping and mentoring is concerned, but it's about giving them, empowering them to utilize the voice they already have, okay? And so this is about getting them involved and engaged into this as well. Um, and that's important. It is really important. I remember when I was younger, I wished people listened. Yeah, sure, I knew I was dumb and I didn't know a lot of things and I needed to be guided. But I also wanted my voice to be heard, and there's no better way of learning than when you feel like you have the freedom to voice, right? And that being said, remembering that there are lots of different viewpoints here, lots of different approaches and perspectives that people have. And with that in mind, I'll ask Doug and the rest of you guys can chime in on this. What are you guys asking of us in light of all of this? Okay, I'm going to stand up here and we'll close to you for this. This is the shepherd's challenge to the congregation here. As I think it's pretty obvious we're talking about love for one another and love for God here. And we want feedback, but we do not want the typical feedback. What I mean by that is there is no intention of getting into worship wars. Worship wars, what this group wants versus what this group wants. So we are not the least bit interested in feedback that simply says, I like this or I don't like that. What we are interested in is feedback that says, I think this may be better for North Point. I think this is what's needed. Now, as Adam's referring to here, that requires some things in order to do that. So let's think about this a minute. If, if I see something I like, the first thing is, why do I like it? What is it? If it's just something like, for me, if it reminds me of my devotionals in the 70s, Okay, that's good for me, but that doesn't help any of you at all. If it's something, uh, oh, I see on his face just the really brightness when he's singing that. Okay, that's, that's North Point. That helps. Same thing with dislike. Do I dislike it because of personal feelings, or do I dislike it because it's hurting North Point? Second thing related to that is, in order to love one another, we have to understand and know one another. So if we like or don't like something, we need to be talking with one another. And again, I talked about like we got different groups in different areas. It's not just me talking to the person next to me. Oh yeah, we agree on this, everyone else should too. No, we have vastly different ways of thinking, different likes, different, different dislikes on that. So for North Point, it's loving one another, understanding one another. Don't forget that, and then the, don't forget that love is patient, love does not want our own way, and love expects the best out of people. And with that also, when something's done differently, it's always done because someone feels that's maybe better for North Point. I challenge you on anything that's done differently, come up with what are some of the advantages of it. If you can't see any advantage of something done differently, then talk to us, ask us. We're interested in feedback, but we're not interested in individuals' own likes and dislikes. Because if we concentrate on that, that's selfish. That is not love for one another. Very nice. Wow, I thought he was going to have to preach. I'm out of a job. <laughs> have you ever seen this guy do this? Like, wow. That's what I'm talking about. Do you guys have anything else additional that you'd like to add, address the church with? I'd like to say, have a smile on your face when you worship. I can look at Shirley, and she's smiling at me all the time. And when you see a smile, that helps. Uh, if we have the praise team up here, I hope they're not grumpy, but smiling, that's part of completing the circle. But whatever you do, you may not be happy, but find joy. Find joy, whether it's in worship here or as you're driving down the road Monday morning going to school or to work. Anything else? Uh, I, I might just add, so uh, adding to what Doug said, you know, we, we, uh, we, we feel like communication is important, so that's why we've, we've done that uh, this morning. And, uh, but it needs, to be, it needs to be two ways to be effective, so, uh, so let, us, let us know uh, what, what you think. Email, uh, text, uh, you know, you 
call us up uh, and catch us out in the foyer, uh, so where we can, uh, or, or maybe in your in your point groups, you can uh, talk about it. Uh, uh, so we're uh, we we uh, we've been praying about this, and we want uh, what's best for uh, for for North Point as we as we move forward. I, I guess it's the thing that that think about the history of North Point, the things where. Things seem to be going the best. For the times that we're not thinking about us, we're thinking about somebody else. Um, you, you know, if you think about, well, the classic example is Favlos, but I would say even things like the uh, um, Kids and Divorces is, is another one. Uh, uh, you know, some of the things that the, our, our kids, our youth have done. Um, I think those are the times we go, okay, we're making, instead of making a difference, it's, it's actually sharing the message, if you will, through what we're doing. So this is another one of those times. I think once we, as we orient our hearts toward others, um, and, toward, and, and we really kind of reinforce our, our, our focus on God as well, I think, that, I think that'll, that'll, that'll shine through. And that'll, that'll very much influence everything we do, not just worship. So as we wrap this up, if you guys will stand up, uh, remember, they're asking for feedback. They're asking for conversations that you've been challenged with some things. And whatever your response is, however you react to this, hopefully uh, remember that you respond in love and what love is, okay? Um, and and I, I'm, I'm very grateful that the shepherds were willing to come up here and, and talk about this and lead this charge. But I want to do something a little different today as we wrap up. And so here's a change. Hold on to your seats, Okay. Uh, any kids, teens, teens, I want you guys, you guys come on up here. You'll see who was listening. Hold on. We have three people listening. Teens, come on up here. Y'all, y'all, I want the teens all to come up here on stage. Are there any other children in here? I want you to, I want you to come on up. I'm not sure. Uh, that's a man. Don't act, he acting like he a teen. <laughs> You see these kids? They're not the church of the future, they're the church of now, okay? They're here now. And now we have the opportunity to influence and to work with and to learn from them. We have the option to show them how to love. Would you not want these kids to leave here? And they all will one day. They all will. Leave here feeling and knowing and having an idea of what church should be like and it's unlike anything else because it's a church that listens to them. It's a church that is concerned about them and doesn't just say they love them. They show them that they love them by incorporating them. They actually feel engaged, okay? When kids leave church, oftentimes they don't go back because there's nothing connecting them there. There's no engagement there. They don't feel that. Imagine leaving and feeling that and looking for that. That's the standard, and that's what we want to provide. This is the church now. Stand up, if you will. Look around. Like, literally, look around. As awkward as that is, look around. Look at the people. Say, you are a part of the church now. You're here now. And you matter as well. But this is a challenge to you because we've been in this for how long? How many years have we been a part of this thing? And it's always been, it always comes back to, if we're honest, about us. It always ends up being about us. And it is time, if that's the case for you, for it to no longer just simply be about you. It's to be about all those people around you. I have the people who are most often overlooked here on stage. But then there are others here who probably feel like they're overlooked as well. If you feel that way, my challenge to you is, hey, Pour yourself into someone else. Uh, You have a stage full. Pour yourself into someone else, and you'll see what it really is all about. So we're going to pray, but this is what I want to do. I want all of you guys to come on up here. If if, if you're okay with, come on up. Come on, everybody up here. Just face one another. Come on up here. Come up.
It's a big stage. Fill it up. Come on. Come on up. Here's the thing, guys. This isn't my stage. It's not my stage. This isn't about me. And too often times, it makes me feel like it is. Like, I don't want to feel like I have to save or salvage anything. I'm a part of this just as much as you are. Sure, I get to speak longer than you. And I like that. I do what I do because I'm called to do that, but this isn't just simply about me. It's about all of you. It's about, it's about all of you. This stage is our stage. This is for us. And here in this place, when we're together, we're not here alone. We're not here alone. But this demonstrates what we have every day, and that's love and connection and engagement. God and with one another. Let that be what this is about.